Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. My name is Suze Pathanathan, and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Brickle. Thank you so much for joining us in this highly anticipated Brickle webinar. We can't thank you enough for, for registering, and we hope that you leave this webinar with just tons of insights and motivation to make some changes to the way that you look at your business. So today, we're excited to delve into the fascinating world of e-commerce and ERP solutions specifically focusing on some of the past pain points, some of the present pain points, and where the future's headed. So you can consider yourself a bit of a time traveler. We'll be covering how, in a rapidly evolving marketplace, the promo industry is experiencing its own unique challenges and also opportunities. The shift to digital has not been without its obstacles. If you have tried to implement any systems in-house, you'll know the pain of this firsthand. The integration of modern digital tools and e-commerce platforms can ease those pains long-term though. So as part of the content, we'll be understanding these challenges and then looking at how the adoption of these digital tools can really change the way that businesses operate, all the positives. And we'll look at upcoming trends and technological advancements that will shape the future right at the end. At the end, you'll also have an interactive Q&A session, which is your opportunity to ask the experts, including Matt and our team here at Brickell, some top of mind questions. Whether you're a business owner, a marketing professional, or simply interested in this amazing world, I encourage you to actively participate, ask questions and engage with us throughout the session. We're very friendly. So grab a cup of coffee, settle in and let's explore the future of e-commerce and ERPs together. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Hello everyone and welcome to Future of E-commerce. So before we kick off, I'd love all of us to just go around and introduce ourselves. You've already heard from me. I'm Suze Pathmanathan and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Brickle. Jason? introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, my name is Jason Reinhardt. I am the CCO and one of the co-founders of Brickle. Hi, every hi everyone. Uh, Dan Vermont. I am the VP of Sales and Operations here at Brickle based out of London. And I'll hand the floor over to Matt. Sure. My name is Matt Staff. I'm the Director of Sales with the Turian. So the back of my baseball card will read uh, prior to this, both sides of the industry uh, with the top 40 distributor and then the top 40 suppliers. So the next question arises, why are Aturian and Brickle here today? So it's a good time to just give an overview of what our companies actually do. Perfect. So maybe I'll kick this one off. I think, you know, we ultimately have come together here today for the promotional product industry. Matt and the team here at Brickle, you know, we have a shared customer base. And those customers have common goals, common interests, and ultimately we're looking at how we can best solve those problems for the industry. Um, the old saying, a problem shared is a problem halved or a problem solved. You know, we are seeing on both sides of the fence, whether that's front end through the e-commerce or through order management fulfillment through ERP solutions that there are, you know, problems with within the industry. Um, it's very fragmented. Uh, I think it's safe to say that the promotional product industry as a whole is um, or has traditionally been quite slow to adopt and adapt to new technology. And we're really now at the forefront of people understanding they need to make or invest in change in order to grow and scale their businesses. Now, Matt, I don't know if you've got anything more to add context from your side, but I'll let you add in if there's anything there. That That's a pretty good summary. I think that... Um... You know, the, the word of the day will be fragmentation, probably. You'll probably hear us, us all say that quite a bit in understanding, you know, th this is a fairly late adopting industry, but with this this tidal wave of online uh, business coming, it's it's already here. And, you know, in talking to, again, our, our mutual clients and mutual prospect distributors, it's much of the same story where I think we're seeing maybe a little bit of a lack of preparation for, for a continuation of those same trends. I think I'd like to add on to that as well. I think one of the things that you'll find, especially I hope helpful in this webinar is one of the things I've noticed in here is that there's really no end to end solution. And then when you do have integration, it feels like people are integrating, but they're not collaborating. And I feel like one of the advantages we're going to be able to bring to the table is that we're really collaborating with the ERPs. So it's not that we say to Matt, here are the customers and we're sending the orders and then Matt goes, OK, this is how we do it. It's a, we're really dialing in and we have constant conversations where we're trying to make sure that as customers are shifting and what they're doing from Brickle, that the ERP solution 
adapts as well. So it's not just a guesswork. We're really kind of going together. So it's more of a, it's not just a seamless integration. It's really a transition, right? Into what's expected, like the flow should be nice and easy. And that way we understand what to expect from the Aturian side and Aturian knows what's going to be coming in from the Prickle side. And I think that that's where we have some really good advantages that we're we're not we're not confined into our little boxes. We're really trying to understand the customer, so that way that flow is is smooth. And when you have companies like both our sides of it, we're very nimble and adapt very quickly, so we can make adjustments that make sense for all the customers there. So again, it helps drive sales, streamline the process, and make sure we have the best operational efficiencies possible from start to finish. You know, so just want to step on and add to that too, as well as how I see it, because I think that's really missing in the marketplace is that. People put something together, but there's no real collaboration between two systems. It's just more of we push data or we receive data. And then understanding that a little further, I think, is really helping us help the customers really get what they really need out of both sides of this. Perfect. Um, I think we've got a poll. Am I right, Sus? That's right. Yeah. So we'd love to ask the audience, what's your biggest concern when it comes to investing in new tools? Is it migration onboarding? Is it the cost? Or is it the ROI, the return on investment? I'm going to give everyone a minute to just answer. Are we answering in chat? We are, yes. So the poll will come up in chat and you can just click the answer. Yeah, so for anyone, I think on the right-hand side of your screens, um, you should be able to see a little poll where you can add your answers. I mean, I imagine if you can't answer all three um, and you have to pick one, then, you know, um, there could well be uh, all three of them uh, be an answer equally. So be interesting to see what the results are. But one in from Robert, return on investment. In the chat there. So, Susan, we're going to look to to wrap that up. I think everyone hopefully should have been able to answer that. And, and... Interesting. All right. Migration on boarding. Why don't we start there? 50% of people concerned about migration and on boarding. Matt, I'm going to I'm gonna throw the bone over to you there. ERP, there's a lot more to migrate. <laughs> I, I thought that might be coming my way. Yeah, it's 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 by far, I mean, in a lot of the demos we do, it's a question that gets asked before we're even done. Um, obviously, that, that sounds like a good thing, right? We're excited. We like what we're seeing. What does this look like to come on board to a Turian? The truth is, it's a little bit different for everybody. Um, you know, we have many, many things in place to make sure that every uh, I is dotted and every T is crossed. And that's easy to say. And the, the hard truth is a lot of that migration lands on you, the distributor. Uh, the truth is, you know, where is your data coming from? That's kind of the scary question because what we're seeing, and we'll touch on this several times today, we're seeing distributors have data in many different places. They might have it in an order management system. Um, they might have proposal and quotations in items that they presented for decks for stores. In another location, they have salespeople who are using Excel spreadsheets. And then there's your inventory system and then there's your accounting software. So in, you know, with our system, that being all in one place, the, the migration onboarding really comes down to a matter of, do you want to clean that up on the front end or do you want to bring over everything and kind of clean it up within our system? And I can't answer that question for, for the distributor. It's, it's uh, that, that part's up to you. Uh, that part is up to how clean of an export that comes. But from there, things flow downhill. Things get very, very easy. Again, because all that data, all that information is in one place. You know, as, as far as onboarding, um, you know, that's a very rigorous training activity, Q and A sessions, a lot of that take home materials, a full onboarding hub, a whole help docs portal. So it's it's certainly a longer term effort, and obviously we we position that as we want to set you up for success. If you're leaving your ERP system or if you're moving to one for the first time, it should be something you're doing for 10 years. It, this is not a, a one-year move. This is not a two or three-year move. And it's not something we'd ever only want you on our system for a year or two. We want you there, obviously, for as long as possible. So that long story long is handled very delicately. We hold hands quite a bit. And obviously the, the, the story of that part is much the same with Brickle, I'm sure. But there's there's a lot of data 
to consider and there's a lot of moving parts so i guess rest assured that yeah. we have a structure for everything no the migration piece is really interesting because i think there's this hesitancy to you know you've obviously started to look or to explore or investigate new tools because there are problems concerns issues with your current system or setup or well, that's the online store platform whether that's your ERP solution um it might work it might be incredibly manual it might you know, be resource heavy and costly, but there always seems to be that initial hesitancy to jump from something that isn't working into something you're excited about and you're looking forward to using, but I guess it's the unknown, right? And much like to your point there, it's very much a handheld holding exercise. You know, we ultimately want to present you with the tools and make you experts in using them. It's not with, you know, we don't have any benefit from leaving you out high and dry on your own to to work out these solutions and very much want to set you up for success. But I think that also leads nicely into cost because uh, Matt, I'm sure from your side as well, I know in some of the mutual customers we've we talked to, there is again a historical um, expectation that investing in new tools and software is hugely expensive. And don't get me wrong, it, it definitely can be, but I think we're changing that slightly. And uh, I don't know whether you want to speak to, to some of that cost. Sure, yeah. And I'm, I'm probably cheating a little bit um, if we... If I'm giving now the introduction to the genesis of Aturian and where we came from. Uh, if you haven't heard of us, and, and so I'll kind of give you the background of, of where we came from because it speaks to everything you just said. So if you know if you're finding yourself in a place where you're actually looking at you know some of these changes to make, it might be that you're migrating from a system that hasn't been updated in a long time or, or some archaic technology. It might be that you have multiple systems you're coming from, um, and there's. You know, where Aturian came from is, again, we're, we're built by distributors. We're built exclusively for this industry for print and promo distributors and all of those unique needs and, and hopefully, you know, being able to adapt for the future. So, you know, what our, our founders, when they were doing what you all might be doing, which is looking at industry technology and then outside the industry technology, what they found was a very, very wide spectrum with two distinct ends to it and absolutely nothing in between. So on one side, you had that industry technology. It understands the distributorship. It understands what you need. Maybe it isn't as flexible. Maybe it isn't as open to integrating with the partners of your choice. Maybe it says, you know, you want to work with this online store platform. We have our own. You can't do that. And then on the other end of the spectrum is your outside, your, your NetSuites, your SAPs, and the list goes on. And those are extremely robust systems, but they come with an extremely robust cost and a time to implementation that would blow your mind. You know, I'm, I'm not talking about months. I'm talking about years to get that essentially from the ground up, built to speak distributor and then built to your custom workflows and processes that you need, and then all of your integration partners. And obviously, you know, imagine the time, imagine the cost to do that. So in trying to fill that void, um, you know, Aturian was created to say, why, why can't we have a system that speaks to all these things with a cost that, that justifies all that it could do uh, on the distributor side without jumping over to um, you know, the crazy implementation times, the having to build from the ground up. And again, that's that's not to say that we check every single box. Again, if, you, if you've gone down this road, if you're in the weeds of looking at a system, you probably found that not everything checks every box, but we try to come close. But um, you know, that's that's where we came from. Essentially, is that how do we how do we get to a point where we feel like we're prepared for the future to grow to scale without these immense costs, without this immense time for implementation? I think I'd like real quick to tie all three of them together. So how I look at it is right, cost and return on investment kind of coincide together, right? Something's going to be expensive to invest in. And I find that that comes down to migration and onboarding. What's interesting in this industry is people is whether you have a customer that comes on board and is understanding that things have to change. So it's not just your technology that changes, but you're, you're, it's whether the customer is ready and able to adapt to a whole different workflow, because once they get that new workflow, that's where you get the return on investment. Your operational efficiencies change dramatically, and that's going to reduce all of your costs together. And we find that those who are the most willing and able to adapt, right, they're, they're, it's, you're going to step outside your comfort zone if you've been doing something for 20 years a certain way. So one of the questions I think that we asked that it really ties it together, and it's kind of an interesting way to really frame it in, is what are you trying to accomplish? 
as opposed to, I want to do it this way. Yes, but what is the end result? Because there's a lot of different ways to get to that end result that you're thinking of it from a, from that point of view that you've been doing. And we're looking at straight from a technology point of view. We're, we're not in your, we're looking at how you're doing things, but we want to start with what are we trying to accomplish? And then we show different routes that we feel are 10 times more efficient. And the customers that get into that kind of rhythm, it, that's where you get your return on investment because you immediately start to realize I got 15 minutes here. I got an extra hour here. They really start to dial that in. And that's, again, kind of ties again to cost savings as well. So I think they're, they're, that, that's why it would look perfect on the 55 is they really kind of tie together. I think the ones who can't step outside that comfort zone, that's where they have the more difficult time. It's just that I, I have to do, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet, there's just something they have to do a certain way that they, they don't step outside of. So, but yeah, I think it's an interesting, interesting as far as investing in that, because it's not just investing in to tools, you have to invest your time. You have to want to learn the new flow and get into that. It's just a different process. It's the hard part is the first 90 day cycle, right? That's the real onboarding process. After that 90 days, it's unbelievable how much time you get back in the next 90 days by investing heavy in the first 90 days. And then it just continues from there. Yeah. I mean, I love that we've dived directly into um you know some of these hot topics and it's thrown us completely out of sorts here and we were going to give a little bit of background so i just want to quickly just dive back into that and ultimately give everyone here on the call a bit more background into both brickle and Aturian and you know really give you a sense of of who we are so matt you touched on some there but i'm sure there was other points so maybe we can just quickly recap that before we dive i in. i cheated i jumped ahead i took the opportunity to, to intro to her in a little bit but yeah the, the only thing i really left out there is you know again if you if you don't you haven't heard of a Turian. We're a 100% cloud-based system, access us from anywhere in the world. We were built by distributors exclusively for distributors, you know, people who understood the pain points of the industry and what it takes to grow and scale. And we're looking for, you know, this exact system that, that really didn't exist out there. That, you know, I think I, when I cheated and, and jumped ahead, I probably said everything else. So I, you know, I'll move ahead to you guys. Perfect. Well, yeah, Brickle, what, what is Brickle and where have we come from? So founded in 2016, we're an enterprise e-commerce solution specifically focused for online stores. And really what we're trying to do is tie together the fragment mentation uh, and provide you with a sales tool that enables you to sell ultimately more product. We've got innovative tools, technology, solutions, but we're looking to play nice with others. And part of the reason why we're here with Aturian is because, you know, the industry isn't just using a single tool. They're using multiple tools. So whether that be APIs, whether that be supplier integrations, we're looking to provide you with the information and tools at hand that's going to enable you to grow, scale, and drive sales. Much like Matt's point about how we were built, we were built from the seat that you're sat in. So whether that's front-end sales, whether that's operations, whether that's behind the scenes, whether that's manufacturing supply, we have industry experts throughout Brickle that have fed into building out a platform that's fit for purpose. So... Uh, that's a little bit more about us for anyone who's unfamiliar with Brickle. And yeah, maybe we can dive into the next slides and some more industry pain points. Challenges, uh, where to begin? Um, there are multiple. We've shared a lot of these in our brief introduction into why we're here today. But maybe we can highlight a couple of these uh, as bigger and wider topics that we can both both solve. I think one of the key things I mentioned at the start was share goals and common interests. Ultimately, that's driven by the distributor, um, who, whether they realize it or not, all have the same issue. They might be fundamentally operating in slightly different ways, but the issues remain the same. So the first one is, is using multiple systems to achieve goals, whether that's tax, whether that's shipping, accounting, ERP solutions, online store platforms. I think from, from our side of map, maybe you can speak to, to more from what you see also, but people are just using such a wide variety of tools and historically haven't been able to link them together. And I think that's key. That's that's public. I think mean, number one sort of is that the tentacles from that reach out to all of these other you know, challenges on the screen right now, which is 
you know, it, you'll find yourself in situations where you you should have flexibility and choice. You should be able to uh, run a system side by side, but that data needs to be shared. That data needs to communicate, needs to speak. You need to have at least access in one unified place, one single source of truth, depending on where the data is coming and where it's going. So, I mean, it, it's it's so easy to split off into saying, you know, does your system, whatever it might be, can they ingest orders from your online stores? The answer, surprisingly, to a lot of distributors we talk to is no, it, it cannot for a multitude of reasons. So from there, it's okay, well, how are you doing something as simple as building a, a product deck, an ideation deck? Well, this is, I'm using ESP or I'm using Sage and then I, I create a, a PowerPoint over here and then I have to task that into our CRM and then that goes into our ERP eventually. And you know, downstream, if you do that enough, these are all very manual actions all in different systems. I guess the question I would I would ask everybody on, on this call is, do you think that your team, that everybody, no, department to by department, user by user, employee by employee, is diligent and meticulous enough to update all of this information in every one of these systems? And then with the knowledge that a lot of salespeople, a lot of CSRs like to kind of do things their own way, and they might use an Excel spreadsheet over here to keep track of this customer, or these orders, before you know it, you know, you're you're talking about not two or three systems, but seven or eight different systems and, and competing philosophies with each of those and how they're supposed to be used. So it, you know, I probably cheated again because we've we've covered four or five different aspects of of what you know an ERP system could be. But it just it branches off so easily into sort of a scary space of well, I I really don't know uh, everything that our team is using right now. And I don't know exactly how they're using it. I don't know where to find some of this data if I had to in a pinch. Um, and that goes into inventory. It goes into your accounting system. And all of these things can be wildly disconnected. On the front end of that, obviously, is Brickle and it's in your online store solutions. And, you know, the, the easiest part of that conversation that should be to solve is how does your online store system connect with your order management and ERP system? I think for us, it's very common for us to see that to place one order, clients can go anywhere from six to 10 touches of they have to do for just placing one order. And that that was eye opening when we first got, you know, as an enterprise solution, when you see that, it was it was quite alarming of how much manual work goes in for just one order. So these companies that are doing, you know, 60, you're doing 100 million, it's astronomical departments dedicated just to touching all the different systems to get it together. So yeah, it, it was quite eye-opening in that. Well, in that it's ed dedicated not just that, but to simple things like data entry or to building and collating spreadsheets or POs or, you know, the the day-to-day -day tasks that sometimes we overlook. But now with advancements in technology, with APIs, with, you know, the ability to talk and interact. And it's not just push data, it's also accepting data. And I think that's one of the biggest differences is that traditionally ever you know a lot of people if we take the online store platform connection to an ERP everyone just thinks it's a one-way one-way push online store platform sending an order into the ERP but actually now customers are expecting even more they want information back how can we get tracking information back how can we keep the customer updated on the shipping status or where it is in production so you know, a huge part of what, what we've been doing on the front end is listening to the customer and saying, well, hey, if we can make your job easier and create efficiencies for you operationally, how can we also improve the experience that you're giving the end customer? Because ultimately, if customer services are receiving less of those inbound messages, hey, where's my order? Can you update me with tracking? Uh, why is X, Y, and Z happened? You know, that's also reducing time and effort that's being spent in in the process. So I think this um, actually is a perfect lead in. We had a question from Sophie of how can Brooklyn Tutorial help distributors? I think the way, the best way to look at it is having one login to be able to pull from suppliers, to be able to embellish, search, have your pricing, inventory, embellish those products, put those products up for sale, and then push those products, those, the orders and everything into a Turian with only logging in to one, one system. And in that user experience right there, you've, you've been able to do all of the things you're typically doing with a seamless flow and not having to bounce like what was just mentioned from one, one system to the other. They start here then they log in to do this and then they go into that. Their whole goal is to be a real end to end solution. So that way, at the end of the day, once the orders are done, that's where you want to be in your order management. So that's where you step into to a Turian, whereas 
all the way up into that point, you only have one place you have to you have to log into to do everything you typically need to solidify orders, deals and stores and everything else. So streamlining that process, that's really where I think how Brickle and Naturian help is that you're not thinking of all the different touch points you have. We're kind of really streamlining all of it into two touch points. Here's everything from start to finish. And it, and once the orders go through, I need a management to the ERPs. Now you go into that system. It's like having two proper sides of the fence, the front end of operations and then the back end of operations. That's really should how companies should run efficiently. So I think giving that process there and consistency, right? Going back to NetSuite. When you look over at NetSuite and we've integrated with plenty of NetSuite. So I can tell you that I've never seen it even closely done anywhere near the same way. So that goes back to the same thing is consistency is king in everything you do in business. If you want operational efficiencies by just this process alone, you're looking at roughly a two to 9% savings in, in, in operational efficiencies. And all of, I always say is that's your money. That's, that's, that's all profit money you're, you're, you're dedicating. If most clients, if you could get, if you, as a distributor, if you could get 400 hours a year back of your life, not doing all of the things you do that do not make you money, how much more money will you make when you're selling? Because most of the distributors we deal with, right, they're salespeople. They're they're designed to sell. Our job is to help make you have that ability without all the things that slow you down, where the sale was actually 10% of the work and 90% of it is getting the order done and delivering it. We wanna we wanna flip that around. We want you to have 90% of your time to sell and only take 10% to be able to do everything else to automate through that. And so consistency, where we are going back to again is a Turing came from this industry. And we, we are, it's not an integration, it's a collaboration and integration. So we're constantly talking, even before this, that we plan on discussing some of the things we're doing so Aturian knows what's coming down the pipeline. So that way we're making sure that the customers are like you, like you, Sophie, that would be set up for success. So when you know that we're doing something, you already know your ERP is also aware of it and ready to adjust because the mar- things will change. Technology changes, things adjust, how workflows do. We always want to stay ahead of it, but we also don't want to go, well, now I have to go talk to my ERP. No, that's not how this would work. We've already been in discussions, so we really want to make sure that it's a very seamless process. So we, we're thinking ahead and collaborating more together where that's not something that's done in this industry at all. And I feel like that's that's where you'll have some advantages to give you the ability to sell more and on all of that. So it kind of hits on all the topics sitting in that screen. I, th- I think Sophie also had a follow-up question for Matt there as well about how could Aturian help suppliers navigate uh, shipping and logistical hurdles? Yeah, I think Jason probably touched on that at least a little bit, just you know, creating those efficiencies, having data in one place. You know, If you're talking about more of you know warehouse and inventory management. Uh, you know that's a whole separate conversation where Aturian has an entire inventory triangulation module built in. So you're from that end, you're actually understanding the true cost of your goods in your inventory uh, on a FIFO model. You're understanding you know where those goods came from. One of the most common hurdles we hear of is you know let's take a black Gildan T-shirt G4000. Let's call it. And you have 50 different suppliers that you can get that from. You know, how easy is it for you to track within your inventory, let's say, where that came from? Or even, you know, which is the model that we have connected to our online store with Brickle? You know, all of that information is, is stored away within Aturian to understand, you know, here's the true cost of those pieces that we still have inbound in our inventory. Where did those come from? Um, and I mean, from there, it, it, it's a perfectly fair question, Sophie, but I think I could probably spin off into... 10 different topics about navigating shipping and logistical hurdles. So if you have a follow-up note on, on a specific, I'll, I'll leave it there. But I think Jason probably touched on you know, having that data in one place. So you're not jumping between an inventory system, an accounting system, order management, your, your store, and, and whatever else you have in place. That time savings and peace of mind that I'm taking this action in one place and it's funneling the information to wherever it wherever it needs to go. Uh, it's it's one person, one action. Yeah, I think we've got plenty, we've got some more Q and A coming at the the end. So um, let's just skip. Conscious of everyone's time here, we've got a lot to talk about onto the the next the next discussion topic, and really look at why digital is the new frontier and, and what's driving that. And ultimately, I think it's customer uh, accommodation in the sense that the customer expectation and experience is changing on a on a weekly monthly basis quickly i think that's the 
scary thing. It's how quickly that shift and, and change is happening. And in order to meet those new expectations, we have to change the way we operate digitally. So from anything from integration, from how the industry is moving towards more of a print on demand, as much as we love to hate what Amazon has achieved with the order in the morning and deliver at 10 p.m. at night, you know, it makes it very difficult for promotional product industry to keep up. We have much longer uh, lead times with regard to product. It's not all coming from the same um, huge warehouse. You know, there's multiple players from suppliers to decorators to distributors to shipping, all involved in, in getting product out the door. So, I mean, what do you see from your side in, in the digital frontier, Matt? It's, there's probably two, you know, ways to, to understand. I mean, from one aspect, it's, yeah, we, we've already mentioned that this industry is, is typically not the earliest of adopter of those types of trends. And the end users for any distributor are also retail consumers. And they've come to expect certain things as they are, you know, going online shopping, whether it's Amazon or really anywhere else. It's, you know, what the actual ordering experience is like, what is checkout? What kind of information do I receive back about my order? Am I tracking my status? And then on the other side, you, you've you got kind of the right way. It's if, if you're trying to replicate that experience on the promotional product side, you, you can't do things the old way, whether it's a print on demand, whether it's inventory, you, you have to be prepared for that. That This is no longer a, a trend in and of itself. I think the speed to which with distributors are now doing, you know, running these online orders and the percentage of their business that it is, you know, this is, this is what I was leading into is we kind of did this to ourselves. You know, I got in the industry 17 years ago and faster lead times were just sort of becoming a thing. And, you know, there was very few suppliers that had a 24 hour service and, you know, it's just, it's what the distributors, customers, what consumers have come to expect is I want my stuff and I want it now. So how prepared are you as a distributor to kind of mimic that retail buying experience and the expectations that have come with it? Yeah, I, I think it's a huge shift. And it was one of the, the points on the slide before from that typical bulk ordering or that forecasting, you know, you've got to hold X amount of inventory on shelf. And typically that was a perhaps a distributor um concern you know if forecasting and having inventory so that they can fulfill customer needs through online stores whereas you know we're moving towards the more print on print on demand element of it and you now no longer have to as a distributor worry about that you're now pushing that back up the chain to the supplier and you're looking to have visibility and pick products that you know the supplier can fulfill you know, take a, a, a DM130 t-shirt and having the confidence to put that in any or all of your stores and know that at any point that can be fulfilled by any number of suppliers, maybe from any number of warehouse locations pointed to any number of decorators. But having that consolidated and collaborated and i think it leads really nicely into the the shifting landscape how potentially the the retail space has maybe dominated in the forefront of driving trends and promotional product industries i think we discussed this yesterday matt you know a year two years behind what we see happening in retail i think i'd like to unpack actually matt brought up such a good point that i think it was when everything shifted for fulfilling you know the speed right there was never like that they're going to a 24 hour response. So how did that change? It started with some sort of technology. It was still not phone calls and fax machines. It was an email. It was a way it could tie into their system. It could automate. Okay. So it shows that you can see in that one move, it went from, it takes a long period of time to get orders processed to just this one ship. Now we can start sending out in 24 hours. This is where it's like, it's so, so people see it. If you look at what's happening, that shift was, it's just that it, the, it's the, the speed of what the technology has changed has been at, at the slowest crawl I've seen, but that's where, again, that's where I think that those who adapt have done exceptionally well. There's no doubt. I've not seen any customer, not one that have adapted to technology 
and it has taken them a step backwards. I can name yeah. every ways that it takes them a step forward. And that going in of kind of looking through these bullet points, right? You have a, a tremendous amount of hours because what you find is people spend 15 minutes doing something they didn't expect to have to do, 20 minutes doing that. And all of a sudden now that becomes part-time job for them. And so those efficiencies go away. And then you're starting to look over at how the shift market right there with, right? Print on demand is replacing traditional bulk orders. And that is, in our opinion, from coming from a brickle point of view, that is absolutely the shift. It's painfully obvious of where the market is kind of transcending. And how does that help reps? Well, being able to put a print on demand store up very quickly is a key. And how do you leverage that as a distributor? Well, one of the things I noticed that distributors ask, right, if you're going for a bigger account is who's going to hold the inventory? Are you paying for us? to buy the inventory or are we paying for it? Because that affects your negotiating prices. And then the big concern being is how much inventory is gonna be dead inventory, how many extra smalls that we're not gonna ever use that we don't do anything with. And how I think this will shift is that leverages the distributor to give the ability of, hey, Toyota, you're not gonna to have to come out of pocket. We aren't either. The cost per unit would be a little bit higher but the overall cost would probably be smaller because of how much dead inventory you don't have to worry about any further. So, and, and I think in today's world and the way things are shifting, people want to hold on to their money, right? They don't want to have to let go of any more cash than needs to be. But there's no way to do all of any, any of this without having it automated. I mean, on demand has to be a seamless flow to be able to do that. So everything kind of ties in together as, as it's transitioning into that new wave of how the market's moving. And to, to Robert's question of, you know, is quantity one, the next large push in our space? Do we feel the same way? Yeah, that's a large reason why the online store business has taken hold. There's inventory to get one piece out if you don't have an on-demand option. Now you have many more on-demand options. So the, the question I would almost push back to everybody is knowing that that's not only the future, but that's the trend we're already seeing you know, we know that it costs as much for somebody to manually key in a one piece order as it does 10,000 pieces. So if you're typing that in, a person is sitting at their desk typing in that order, whether it generated from a store, from an Excel spreadsheet feed, from whatever else, it, you're talking about three seconds, let's say, that it takes to type those, those four extra zeros to a point where the cost is the same is a scary proposition. To say that this person's time, let's say it takes 20 minutes to enter in supplier information, decoration information, uh, the items, and let you know, you simplify it to just a water bottle order with one vendor. And your mind will go from there. Well, what if I have apparel? What if I have a, a you know contract embroiderer tied into the order? What if I have five or six different vendors on the order? You know, you have to have that process automated to control that cost. That trend is not going away. And it, it will be a one-piece trend. It will just increase the percentage of orders that are that lower volume. And so, you know, think about if it costs me just as much to manually key in a one piece order as it does 10,000, what do I do from there? And that's kind of the tip of the iceberg. You're just getting the order into your system is, is the very first step. And you've got a, a profit and a revenue that pale in comparison to that larger order, but it's taken, you know, your team just as long to get it into the system. And downstream, it's going to be the same way with managing the inventory. It's going to be the same way with creating the invoice. Yeah, I mean, that, there's an awful lot to un unpack there. I know we're going to be short of time, so let's let's jump on to, um, you know, perhaps what the the landscape looks like, the shifts. I know we want to talk about some future state. Susan, I know you've been doing a lot of investigation and research into to the shifting landscape and, and whether you want to talk to to some of these trends and facts. Yeah, sure. So we've seen that post-COVID, especially, that shoppers are increasingly turning to online stores. Um, a lot of people are shopping on their mobiles on top, around 80%. And the convenience of browsing and purchasing items from your home is completely unprecedented and is here to stay. You can display a broader selection of products. You're not as limited, you know, when it comes to traditional base catalog base sales. You can really put the customers in front of your products and vice versa. So you can put your best foot forwards when it comes to your selections. So when it comes to creating bundles and collections, any kind of seasonal promotions, all of that is now an opportunity for, for us from a marketing side. But for consumers, it just gives them that greater range of selection as well. Got some statistics as well, just around what that looks like. So 20.8% of retail purchases are expected to take place online just this year. 24% of retail purchases are expected to take place online by 2026. Um, and 63 trillion is the global e-commerce 
market value in 2023. So it's a huge opportunity for people to just get online, start selling and use the best platform for that as well. We know that, who that is for the promotional products market. And I think that leads really nicely into, into our next topic, which is data and how, you know, data is, is king and the ability to be able to analyze things like average cart size, like your, I, I know we were talking yesterday, Matt, about, you know, all the different ways and metrics you display, but it's again, to go back to our point, it's about being able to consume those in one space. And I don't know whether you wanted to touch on what you're seeing on, on your side and the requests that you're getting in terms of metrics and, and data. Yeah. I mean, it, to, to try and encapsulate that fairly quickly, it, it all comes down to having that that information in one place, you know, whether the orders came from an online store system or online store systems, whether they were manually entered in, regardless of department, how transparent is that information is a huge aspect that you know, we, we've hardly touched on, meaning department to department. Do we actually know what's going on with these orders? Is it safe to invoice these? Do we have the, the vendor side, the AP side fully vouched? Is it all accurate? You know, is, is the next question. So it's it's really a matter of having clean data and having that transparent from department to department. Where is it coming from? As long as it is funneled into one place, that's the, that's the key. Expecting that to get out to your customer, nice and neat too, is a whole nother question. But you know, really, not to beat a dead horse, it's it's getting that information regardless of the different sources for data, siloed them to a, a nice one compartment. Jason, I, I know data is a, a hot topic on, on a, a lot of your cards and questions, and I don't want to drop you, uh, drop you in it, but I know you know you have some great insight into it. Yeah, I love it because I've said it a thousand times, Susan, right from, I, in, in, I, it's like team up is data drives business. If you're not understanding that data drives business in every way, in shape and form, then that's the first concept you need to wrap your head around. Having information, being able to move data, putting everything where it needs to be, that is, that's the game changer. That's why when we talk about, well, what do we do? If you, two to 9% savings in operational efficiencies, it's a no-brainer. It's, it, it's a no-brainer. And that kind of leads in, again, going back to, uh, you know, like the data, like Mia just asked the question, said, with the state of the market being the way it is, are people still investing in to, new tech? I always like to say that's a loaded question, but the answer is the smart ones are. <laughs> the smart ones are because if you don't jump in with new tech, whether it's us or anything you're doing, you need to have, the, you're, you'll get passed very quickly if you're not investing in your tech. You don't want to be last doing that because playing catch up in that aspect is tremendous because I think where you have advantages are, I think Matt brought onto it is you really want to know all your analytics. Having systems that are one location, so much easier to take that data and understand that data in a way that you like, not a forced way. This is the, how you do it. It's, you really can look at the data the way you need to know so it helps you drive your sales and business, right? And then kind of going and touching in with, with the new tech, I will tell you that that's why on-demand production with the way the market's shifting. Vantage Apparel, give you a great example. They went from two years ago, 20 to 30% of the business was on demand. They are now this year will be 50 to 60%. So that's not going to go back down or stay stagnant. That's going to go up to 70, 80%. It's just, if you're just watching what's happening, that transition, that is great data that if you had all of this in that ERP, you could look over and realize how much your business is going from on demand might be 5%. All of a sudden now you're on demand is at 20%. You can start to see those upticks and where that trend goes. And, and that, again, leading into this slide is going to give you a better, it's not just going to give you a better user experience. I would say it, data gives you ammunition. Data gives you ammunition to go get business because now you're speaking to a customer in a much more educated, it's not guessing. You're like, look, I know the uptick is going there. You, you have better ammunition sharing that. And to me, that not only gives you better ammunition from a sales point of view, it helps leverage closing deals that you're looking to do because you really come across and you show as an industry leader, you, you talk to your customer. I always use Toyota as an example, right? You're going to Toyota and saying, listen, on demand is where we would do it. You can add products and you start to really educate them. And that way you're becoming an expert as opposed to somebody just selling them something. You know, you're, you're, you're giving them a pathway. All starts with data all of it. It really is important in that aspect of it. That's why Matt and I would discuss what we laugh is I can't begin to tell you all the different ways I have seen data just in one company. 
from it from a word document and excel spreadsheet to ever and sometimes the excel spreadsheet is literally the most advanced thing that i've seen that they were using like that's their high-end technology and so you can't it's like emails where orders go back and forth with emails right so I guess this is a real important factor and where I think Brickle comes into play that I think is a huge advantage. When you're going back and forth, as we talk to customers, everybody goes emailing back and forth. Well, this is how we get the approval. This is how we start to do the orders and do all that. Well, that's even if that's great and it works, one, it's inefficient, it's slow. But the main thing is you can't get analytics from an email, zero. So just converting and bringing that experience into a store, as an example, it's good for branding your company. It's good for a user experience, but it also is really good to get better analytics and data and information, right? You have your Google tags, whatever you need. You really get to start to see how customers are viewing your information, how things can uptick and do that. Again, that's why I said you have to get everything into that central location where the data makes sense. If you don't, you're you're going to get behind. You don't get, you don't get all those advantages and in sales, you're always looking for competitive advantages for expanding your business operations. I know we're going to, we're going to jump around a little bit with slides and the essence of time, but Robert, you know, asked a question with the partnership. Do you feel like the end user is data entry for the orders? That, that is essentially the philosophy we think you have to have that you're, you're giving the opportunity to your, your customers to go on, have this online order experience through Brickle. When that order is ingested into a Turian, you know, what we're telling every distributor we can reach is your team should be doing as absolutely little as possible in terms of manual keying from order entry to getting that order to completion, whatever that means, whether it's an acknowledgement, whether it's an invoice or just closing, finalizing the order on your system. I've already touched on that the average order volume is much lower with these online orders. You're giving them the opportunity to order one piece, whether sometimes it's on demand through your supplier, whether it's through inventory out of your warehouse, they now have the opportunity to and have one piece ordered and, and sent out. So if you're trying to reduce the cost associated with getting that order to completion, don't have anybody touch it. You know, when that order comes in from Brickle, there is no manual keying whatsoever, even if it's a multi-vendor. If there are five hard bid vendors from the store and, and two embroiderers, let's say, on it, that order is ingested. Aturian creates all of those purchase orders, no different than if somebody spent two hours typing all of that out. They are ready to go out with one click to each individual vendor that's on that that overarching sales order. And obviously all of the tracking and follow-up is, is through the system to do that as well. And you know, continuing that conversation on even further, I'm probably jumping ahead again, but you know, what are you doing from there to avoid that same manual keen? Yeah. I mean, you know, so that we can get some questions in before we wrap up, I think ultimately what we're trying to achieve here between Brick and Aturian is to integrate to automate. And it's removing those those manual tasks, the scale down to scale up. So how can we get more people focusing on what really essentially they've been employed to do rather than the monotonous time consuming tasks and the manual data entry? And historically, integrations have been costly and time. And I think what we're striving for a connection between Brickle and Aturian is that expectation that you can click the button you can map a small amount of data and we can have a seamless connection in you know hours and days rather than weeks and months at a fraction of the cost i also want to touch on future state because a lot of that is future state you know the one click integration the ability to see all these wonderful metrics and have cross functioning data in every which way you can imagine Industry shifts quickly from your side, Matt. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Where do you think we'll be? Or what problems might we face further down the line? In terms of the, the integration and what distributors' expectations are going to be, you know, I think that's going to be future state is if all of this information is going to live in my ERP, that's wonderful to ingest it. How do we get it back out? Meaning what, what can Brickle or a storage system take from my ERP system, which is... More, more times than not, an order status, a tracking, a ship notification, and perhaps some form of invoice, depending on how <clears throat> that works. You know, from there, I mean, you know, on our end, you know, does it connect with some purchasing systems like Ariba or Coupa? You know, the answer is yes, it can. The, the question is, what about you know, systems like TwoShip or ShipStation? We're already integrated with them. So the, the future state is really dependent on what you as a distributor are hearing from your customer and what you want to build for them. 
Yeah, I think that's huge, right? And something we've been focused on at Brickle is this almost app ecosystem. It's it's having the ability to take whatever tools, and you touched on it right at the beginning, Matt. You know, you should be able to be free to choose what tools you want to use and when you want to use them, and they should all be able to seamlessly talk, integrate, communicate, and it's not a a, a big cost or a big problem um, as long as it's not a fax machine. Everything else is, is fair game. Exactly that. We've got a couple of minutes left. We do need to finish on the hour, conscious of everyone's time. So maybe if there's any more questions that anyone wants to pop in the, the chat now that we can get through an answer. But Jason, while the questions come in, I don't know whether you want yeah, to touch on them. I would love to touch on some things. I think that there was brought up, Susan put in the, the graveyard is littered with companies who do not didn't embrace technology. Sears, Kodak. Kmart, you can name them over and over again. And most people don't know this, but what caused all of the problems with Southwest, the whole fiasco last year, that was a meltdown. It was actually their technology. They didn't even have mobile boarding passes, still paper boarding passes. What actually caused all of that problem for, for Southwest was their technology. So it can be as big as a Southwest, a Sears, a Kmart, or it can be all the way down to one distributor. At the end of the day, if you're not adapting you can keep going, but at some point there becomes a train wreck that you have to get around and you don't want to be in that situation. It's more painful to adapt and understand it at the beginning to stay ahead of the curve than it is to play makeup and figure out how to recover from such damage that you, you do and you hurt your brand and your reputation by not adapting. And I really think that that is such a key component in this industry is that those who adapt are going to do exceptionally well and accelerate. And those who adapt first and faster are going to have all of the competitive advantages over those who take longer periods of time. So everything, in, to, in my opinion, really wraps around into that thought process is you can't name anything that technology hasn't, you, it, you have a computer on your phone. It's not a phone. The phone is the least thing anybody uses anymore on that device. Nobody talks on that phone. Everybody taps on that phone. Everybody downloads and communicates and ties an app in that phone. Everything you do in your daily life has adapted with technology. If you, if you look at every single thing you do, and then you look at your business and say, well, I haven't done anything different in 10, 20 years, then you understand how far behind you are. You don't have the same computer you had 20 years ago, 10 years ago. So that's where I think if you're looking at your company as a whole, where I want to say, and I always like to stress this, there are huge opportunities for distributors right now that are paying attention, adapting to technology, moving on demand, really adding that in there. There are huge opportunities because like Matt said at the beginning, it's a very slow to transition market for who we are with the distributors on that side. So what it really tells you is you have an incredible opportunity if you're first to market, you get to walk in with something nobody else has. That is a competitive advantage. And then you get to do it at blistering speed. That is a competitive advantage. That's a better user experience. And it going into Dan's point, as Amazon spoiled us, a user experience is what you're selling. You're not selling a product. Everybody can sell a product. You're selling a user experience. Sell the best user experience. That's going to bring customers, referrals, and grow your business in a way that gives you long-term retention with customers, right? They trust and rely you on you to, to be able to do things. And going to the last touch on on-demand, because I'm such a big fan of it, is think about Christmas coming up. Where you have advantages with the on-demand is all of a sudden now Christmas comes up, you can add four products. You don't have to think about, well, I got to get a thousand made. I got to get them printed. Got to get them delivered. No, no. One at a time, throw four more products in for Christmas. They can go. You sell exactly what's needed. The clients are so inclined to add those because it doesn't require so much effort and work. And from a distributor point of view, that's where you have when you say, what's the return on investments? It depends on how well you want to push onto this, right? You can learn how to upsell, cross-sell, and do things much faster and easier if you really take advantage of those where nobody else can do it. Nobody else walks in with that advantage. That's what's going to get you more business. It's going to increase your average card size. It's going to increase your overall spend. These are the things that matter that really drive everything you need to, to grow and scale. And I, I just feel like it's a wide open market for distributors right now 
that adapt quickly. Now, I knew I shouldn't have thrown it to Jason with such a short <laughs> amount of time left for questions, but we have run out of time today. Um, we are conscious that there are a number of questions still unanswered in the chat. And we are also conscious that maybe people want to continue conversations with either Brickle or with Matt from Aturian. So um, as a side note, the deck that we have shared today um, will be sent out to everyone who joined. Um, and thank you again for joining. In there will be a couple of meeting links. If you did want to dive in and have a deeper conversation with Matt about an ERP solution, Solution. Check out his meeting link. Likewise, um, there'll be a link for myself from the Brickle side. Um, and we will try to come back to you on any unanswered questions in the chat. Matt, Suze, Jason, thank you all for, for joining us today. And perhaps we should do this again. Let's do it. Yeah, I like that. Because everything, like I said, as we change, I like it. And I'll try to do less of the talk. You want to do it. Awesome. Well, Thanks for now, everybody. thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. From Brickle, from Aturian, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Guys.